How many of you have ever written a bucket list? <laughs> How many of you were disappointed because you haven't quite even started your bucket list? <laughs> We were talking about COVID uh, earlier. I turned 50 in 2020. Um, a gal that was working with me threw me a party and it was literally like the week before everything shut down. So I have pictures of us like, you know, we're in, you know, at the bar and we've got all, all the party things and hats on and whatever and everything's shut down. My plan for my 50th year, I was gonna do 50 things that made me happy go to Guatemala, I was gonna go travel, I was gonna get a new bike, I was gonna do all these things. But yes, it was COVID. I had to rethink what it meant for me to actually include something in my life. What did my bucket list look like then? Very different, but very inspiring in spite of everything that was going on. What I want you to do here is to think for a minute about if you had your ideal bucket list, you can go back to what you wanted in your notebook if you want to, or just off the top of your head. Happiness, it has been said, I won't go into a whole research on this, but what would you like to do or try? Put something that you would like to do or try there. Just take a minute to think about that, write something down. Who would you want in your life? Sort of a bucket list item we don't always uh, <laughs> think about. Who do you want to be surrounded by? And the third one here is what could you look forward to? So when we talk about anticipation, the things that are coming, those things that we actually want to put in motion in our life, um, so much of it is anticipating something more. I had this really interesting conversation with my husband last week about hope. And uh, we were talking about what hope looks like on the face. <laughs> and his hope was like, <laughs> my hope face was like, <laughs> I hope it's going to happen. He's like, why on earth would you make that face? Because you're hoping for it. I'm like, well, because it hasn't happened yet. And I don't know if it's ever going to happen. And I, I hope it does. But maybe I'm a bit of a control freak, so I'm not sure. <laughs> But his face was like exuberance, that he, he believes something is gonna happen. It was so interesting to see the difference. And when we talk about this bucket list, that's really what it's about. It's about us saying, I am hoping for more. I'm hoping to have what I really want. But not necessarily just for my own gain so I can go squirrel away on some mountain that I wish I could live on someday. But it's about how are we then going to connect well and authentically with those around us. And this applies 100% to our work environments. What would it feel like if we were actually coming to work and it was something that was like, you could be your whole self. I was going through a really tough time. I was in sales, very male dominated. Again, nothing against the males in the room. Um, but I tell you, I had to put everything on pause when I walked in. And I would tell them, I am okay as long as you don't ask me how I'm doing. So we're not going there. What I've learned through starting my business, through really doing the work, knowing what I want, knowing how I can step forward day by day to get there, I now understand I can bring my whole self. It doesn't work for everybody, and that's okay. <laughs> how many of you, you would love if you could just show up your bucket list isn't going to be finished. There's a lot to do, but where you feel like you can be yourself in that moment. We were talking about leadership earlier, safety, psychological safety. There are those moments in time where we can make that choice to step forward and know that we have this. The bucket list, it's a bit of a joke <laughs> as you get older in my world, because I think for many of us, there are things that we think, oh, it could never happen. But knowing that we're going to see it through different eyes and we can actually claim these things for ourselves. So this is going to be, you have to really work with me here because we're going to do some crafts. <laughs> um, so in your little baggie where you found your notebook, I have had a couple of questions. What the heck is that in my bag? It looks fancy and it's white. <laughs> There's a little ribbon. There's a ribbon in there. So I want you to guess, what is this? 
<laughs> this, my friends, is your bucket. <laughs> And because I just love pretty things and I like to have fun, I wanted it to be pretty. So, so it is not a complicated thing to put together, but I'm gonna explain so that we are all on the same page. I did ask Kristen to be available to walk around and make sure everyone's got this and <laughs> that you're gonna have a bucket at the end of this five minutes. But what we're gonna do is what you wrote in your book just now, inside, do you see there's a little sheet in there and it has a one, two, three. Did you find it? Does anyone not have a little bucket and a little sheet? Okay, I had big dreams when I did up the booklet. I'm like, we're gonna do this whole ball and we're gonna do like six or seven different things. And so that's why there's actually this, the paper sphere in there. You can do that at home. <laughs> Today, we are actually gonna just fill in those three things or short version, take them from your booklet and put it on this sheet. So, if we could start the timer, just so that I am also on time. We're, we're good. Take a second to write it on there. You also have a little candy sticker. Feel free to put that on your phone, or <laughs> if you, oh, she's got the big candy sticker on her phone. That's awesome. Um, there's a little grayed out area. So what you're gonna wanna do is, once you get, have those three bucket items, I want you to fold it into a circle. A little cylinder. It's gonna look like this. The sticker helps keep it together. <laughs> so you can see, can you see the little grayed out area? It matches the sticker. <laughs> like when we were kids. Once you have your paper filled out and you've got your little cylinder, stick it together. We're gonna do the amazing work of creating your bucket. And I wanted these to be pretty because at least for the next week, I'm gonna ask you not to recycle this. <laughs> I would love for you to put this onto your desk, at school, at work, at home, wherever you are because this is gonna be a reminder. The other reason I chose this style of a bucket is you can see through it. I was looking at some other receptacles for your three bucket list items, and it felt like we were putting it into a time capsule <laughs> and burying it away, and I'm like, no, the point is that you can see it. You're reminding yourself these things matter to you, and so you want to have a reminder of that. So let this be your reminder. So what you wanna do is we folded it the way we did to fit in the bags. My daughters, thank you to my daughters <laughs> who packed jelly beans and helped me pack bags. But you're wanting all four of these, if you can see that, facing the same direction. Everyone in your bags, you've got a ribbon, and so the ribbon is actually gonna be able to tie this whole thing together. You wanna put your cylinder in first, fold up the edges, put your cylinder in, and use that ribbon to tie it all together. So I want you to call out now, if you were to see this on your desk next week, what kind of emotion is attached to something like this? Oh. Thank you. It's just in this center. What are you going to feel like when you look at this? Accomplished. Anyone else? Hopeful. And the happy hope, not the terrified hope. <laughs> are you going to feel like something different is possible for you? It's possible because you actually come to a place where you start to accept that it could be true. So when we start to say, I'm going to do that thing, I'm going to go there, I'm going to put, like I did with Candy, my stake in the ground. I had completely lost my voice in this relationship I had been in, marriage I had been in for 10 years. I landed in Winnipeg, <laughs> and I'm like, my girls are young enough that I need to step up figure this out, and start to work on my bucket list. 
Me putting my stake in the ground to start my business was that. I didn't bring it today, but I had worked with a coach in Edmonton for about a year. And I was so, I didn't know what I was going to do. I felt so stuck. And she said, I said, I feel like I just need to lay down some foundation for home. And she said, what does home mean to you? And I still have it in my office today. She wrote home in a Sharpie just on a piece of paper that she got from her printer. And she started writing everything I was saying. I'm like, home. Home means um, safety. It means that we've got opportunities. I, I said, I'm going to start a PR business. It's a little different now. <laughs> Uh, I said that I wanted my girls to play volleyball. I wanted um, them to have opportunities to meet friends. I wanted to have a, a place where they each had their own room. It was just like everything, like just downloading, downloading, downloading. You wouldn't believe that was 15 years ago. I look at that now, and I was at the dollar store the other day. This would be like two months ago or something. I saw this plaque that said, I am home. And I almost started crying because I, I bought that little $2 plaque and I put it beside my list of all these things because now I can look back in retrospect and say everything on that list, either I decided I didn't want it anymore or it's come to pass. You have this opportunity, it's not gonna be easy, necessarily fun, and it's not gonna happen overnight, but until we start claiming our space and saying this is a place for us what we have in our bucket matters, and that we can, I have met, AEP is a perfect example, I have met some of the most amazing people, the most amazing partners, people that get me, that I can show up and be myself, that can happen in our work and life. And personally, I think that is next level living. In your booklet, you've got flipping the script and leveling up. So we've talked a lot about what you want. We've added some things to your bucket list. And what I wanna do, just in the 10-ish minutes that we have left here to do this part of the activation, is thinking about what does it mean? When I say flipping the script, I come by this very honestly, so I told you a little bit of my story. But when my marriage was coming to an end, and I knew it was very close to the end, um, we did what you call couples counseling. <laughs> it is a beautiful and amazing opportunity for anyone to not just get to know each other, but to get to know ourselves a bit better. What I found, she broke me off from the pack. <laughs> I did a couple of sessions with her on my own. And she, she actually looked me in the eye and she said, so Lisa, we've heard a lot, we've talked about a lot, but what I want to know today is what are your priorities? And I'm listing things off. Oh, I got to feed the kids and I got to clean the house and then I'm going to do this thing. And then, and then after that, I think I'll, I'll probably make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of keeping everything at bay at home. And, <laughs> and I was going through this whole list and she stopped me short and she said, how many of those things you've just listed are your priorities? And it was an incredible break moment for me in her kindness, in her insight. And it actually, when you look at this leveling up, this flipping the script, you see how the stairs are pretty wide at the top. I was way at the bottom here. That's why the hearts are there. I was way at the bottom because I was coming last. I couldn't even articulate what mattered to me. I couldn't articulate my priorities. I'm like, well, I couldn't do that because look at this list. I couldn't do that thing. I couldn't start a business. I couldn't, you know, say something at work because I got to keep everything else in motion. And it felt like Cinderella. You know that story? I identify with Cinderella. <laughs> this, once that, once the, you know, everything's clean, once I've swept this up, once I've put myself in a position where I can actually look out the window, maybe I'll start thinking about my priorities. Flipping the script. Whose responsibility is it? Yours. Is it yours? You're going to flip the script for me? No, it's ours. There is a place that we have to come out from the shadows, put ourselves in the spotlight, choose something, want something, be willing to go for it, 
But me, being somebody that I like to do things on my own and then release it to the world, <laughs> I had to learn when I made the decision to leave my marriage, to do something different, to start my business, to move cities, we moved so many times, it was up to me to flip that script, to make sure that I was looking at what did it mean for me to put my heart first. The, the incredible thing, I think, as we start to look at the world in a way where we get focus, this was sort of the point of this one, where we get focus and we understand what we want, we start to move things out of the way, we start to choose other things, we reserve time in our week, we schedule that workout that morning, it might be once in a month, but we're going to do it. So what I want you to do at your tables is pick one, if you're brave enough, Pick one bucket list item, and I want you just to talk about, you don't have to go through every step, talk about what would be your next step to actually see that as a reality. So I'm gonna set you free to do that, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, we're at 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, oh, Two, one, that's it. <laughs> awesome. Put your hand up if you shared one of your bucket list items. Put your hand up if you shared one of your items. Let's give these guys a hand, honestly. Hard to do that. Put your hands up. Give me a wave if you were trying to find solutions or opportunities to help somebody make a bucket list thing happen. Put your hands up. You know what? We're almost equal there. Did you see what just happened? When people verbalize, then they're like, I know a guy, or I did a thing. What? Caroline, what have you got? I got a cleaning service. Carolyn has a cleaning service in her hand. <laughs> this happens, and it will happen so many times that you are going to, I used to journal it. Now it ha is happening so many times that it's like, oh, I can't keep track. I'm busy, and I'm just living the life. That's why the hearts are at the top on the second page. Because when you start living at the next level, you're actually not aware <laughs> of everything that is coming to your aid, everything that is, you've put yourself in this position now where you can claim it and you can share it and you can be there for others. This is the joy. <laughs> this is the joy. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know it, activations, they used to be called icebreakers. <laughs> My work is really about connection, so I do hope that the time that I've had with you has been a way to connect with yourself, with others, and now as you're moving forward from today with the people that are here to support you in AAP.